Okay, so if you haven't seen our first video on creating uh, an animated holiday card, it might be wise to start there. Uh, but today we're going to go over how to kind of get our characters to move. So far we have some code that gets the backgrounds to change, gets uh, different sprites to show and hide depending on uh, which backdrop is up. Uh, we actually aren't using any um, if-then statements right now though. We're doing it in a pretty simple way where we just use the show, hide blocks, and we have, have it all wait five seconds. Uh, for any changes to be made. Now I, I'd like to go to work on my penguin a little bit. And I actually think, yeah, the penguin has a few different costumes, which is always really fun. Uh, if you remember the cat, he looked like he was running if you had him switch costumes really quickly. Uh, you can have that happen with the penguin, but he kind of looks like he's ice skating if you have him switch between these three costumes really quickly. So I'm going to do a second when the green flag is clicked script. This is so that these two things can happen at the same time. And I'm going to say, let's just put a forever loop, because uh, if he keeps doing it when he's hiding, uh, it doesn't really matter, right? We're not going to see him doing it anyway. Uh, and I'm going to go to costumes, or looks I should say, and he's going to switch between his costumes. So I'm just going to drag this block over three times. I'll start with A, go to B, then to C. Now there's one more thing that I need in here, and I'm going to add a wait block in between each. So now if I click on the green flag, he moves. But it's really rigid, right? Uh, and maybe our changes are a little bit too fast. So maybe we should actually wait eight seconds between everything. Uh, that means we're going to have to change it here too. And for both of these, we'll change everything to eight. Give us a little more time to watch our penguin. Uh, and I actually want to speed this up so it's not quite as rigid looking. And I'm going to change this each of these to a half second. So I'm typing point, a decimal, or a period, and then five. So now, here he goes and does a little bit of dancing. Ah, we didn't fix our snowman. We need to change him to eight seconds. That's why he showed up on that screen. And maybe we switch around the code for our penguin. Maybe he should go A to C to B. What do you guys think? I think that looks pretty good. Now, let's see about our snowman. He only has one costume, so we can't have him animate and move in the same way that we can program our penguin. But maybe we could have him walk onto the screen, like glide to this location instead of going to. So maybe he will uh, actually go to the end of the screen to start. So negative 240, and we can leave the Y the same. So negative 240. So he'll go there, he'll hide. He's going to wait eight seconds, he's going to show up, and then. We'll have him wait one more second, and we'll have him glide to his current location. So let's see how that looks. I think I really like that. Great. Now we have one more character or sprite that we're working with that we haven't really done anything with yet, and that's our snowflake. And if you look at the cover of the card, it's really quite bare. We could use more than just this one snowflake. But let's get to coding this one first. I actually think I would like the snowflake to start out like 
Maybe at the top of the page, way up there. And maybe we could program it to fall down the screen. So I could do, we're going to start at, this is going to be a little bit tricky because of the way that I'm doing it, but let's see if you can follow. This is the y-axis, this direction. So we're going to start at a positive 180. Our y is always going to be 180. But we're actually going to have the x. We're going to do pick a random number from negative 240 to positive 240. And that way, our snowflake is going to fall at different spots each time. It's always going to start at the top, but it's going to fall from different locations each time. And we want this to kind of continuously happen. So it's going to go to this spot. And maybe we just wait a second. Uh, or let's not wait. Let's move change y by negative 10. So when the green flag is clicked, it's going to start here. And now we need kind of a forever loop. Uh, we're going to wait a second before we start that forever loop. Then we're going to change y by negative 10. So if I do this, and I press the green flag again, it picks a random starting spot and falls to the bottom of the screen, which is great. But I think we can make that even better, because what if we want to make the snowflakes look like they're going away and coming back up and going away and coming back up? So when to do that, we can say if our snowflake is touching the edge, then you're going to go to this location, this one that we put here. So if it's touching the edge, which is the bottom of the screen, or really any of the edges, you're going to go and pick a random starting point at the top of the screen. You're going to wait one second. And then you'll loop back up and change y by a negative 10. Mm, there's a reason that my code isn't working right now. And that's because of how I programmed this. I programmed my y, my starting point, to be 180. Well, when my starting point's 180, my snowflake's starting at the top of the screen, and it's already touching an edge. So it can't fall because it keeps moving to random starting points because it's touching an edge. So I'm going to actually change this y to 170. Let's see what happens if we do it that way. Ah, it's still touching the edge too much. 140. There we go. Now it's waiting one second each time it falls, which is making it take a really long time to fall. So maybe if I get rid of that, there we go. I really like the look of that. So my snowflake's falling. But I still think we can make it a little bit better. One thing that I'd like to do is make my snowflake just a teeny tiny bit smaller. So it kind of looks more like the size of a snowflake. And now that I'm happy with the way my snowflake looks, I want to make a bunch of them. And I programmed just one snowflake first because of this really nice thing that I can do, which is called duplicate. Now, you can duplicate by click on the, clicking on that stamp, or you could duplicate by right-clicking. Now, some of you might have been wondering why I chose to do pick a random number for my X. And the reason I chose pick a random number is... I wanted to be able to program my snowflake 
without having to program 30 different snowflakes, even though I'm going to add 30 by duplicating this one. Uh, because if I duplicated a snowflake that had a specific starting point, then they'd all be starting from the same spot. But now, as you can see, these snowflakes are falling and appearing and falling and appearing. And it actually looks pretty neat. I hope this video is helpful. Give it a shot yourself. Maybe you could slow your snowflakes down a little bit or uh, have them change colors as they fall. Try different things out. Um, and let me know how it goes. Have a great one.